Welcome to uh, Material Testing Part 2. Today we're going to be going over uh, the remaining parts of this lesson. Uh, this is where we had finished off the last day we had class, or that we talked about notes actually, and we talked about the area underneath the curve was resiliency. So basically we've talked about everything up until uh, this trend line, all right, the straight linear portion of this. And that's from here is what we talked about. Uh, what we've not talked about then is this up here, this portion of the of the curve that they give us here. Well, when we get just past this point, when we get just past right there, we get to what's called the yield point, when the elastic limit is exceeded. A very small increase in stress produces a much greater strain. Most materials do not have a well-defined yield point. All right, this is important right down here. Most materials do not have a well-defined. We can kind of predict uh, where it's going to happen, but it's not going to always happen at the exact same spot. Exact same spot is the key thing they were saying there. Offset yield strength uh, defines the stress required to produce a tolerable amount of permanent strain. Uh, common value is 0.2%. 0.2%. This top area up here, this is what we call the plastic deformation area. It means it's unrecoverable elongation beyond the elastic limit. When the, loan, when the load is removed, only the elastic deformation will be recovered. It's not going to snap back to its original position now. Uh, with this up here, it's deformed, and that's what we call plastic deformation. It's not going to go back. And, and I think they use the word plastic because it's real easy to see with plastic. You can pull on it, and you'll see that it starts to stretch. And when you let go, it's not going to go back to where it was originally. Think about a pin, plastic pin. You can pull it so far, when you let go, it'll snap back. But if you pull it too far, it bends, and then it's deformed, and it's not going to go back to how it originally looked. This up here, uh, this is going to represent failure. When we have this happening up here, this is no longer going to be acceptable tolerances because it's not going to be uh, where the part can be used. So if a part were to be uh, ex exhibit this much strain and this much stress, it needs to be replaced, essentially what we're saying here, because it's not going to work the way that it's intended to. It's too big, it's uh, too long, too skinny, uh, not strong enough, all these different things. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about here is this tensile test. Um, the load-bearing ability breaks, and what we mean here is, is right here you can see, all right, what's starting to happen here is it's starting to snap. You can tell real quickly here it's going to snap. Um, our peaks, load-bearing ability peaks. Force required to continue straining the test sample decreases. At this point, they don't have the, the, you wouldn't have to keep pulling apart as hard as what you were as soon as you see this starting to happen. This becomes the weakest location at the peak and continues to decrease in the area. This is called necking. All right, again, this right here is called the necking. You can see where it's starting to break. It's very obvious that it's going to break right there along that line in there. Okay, the next thing I want to point out to you is right here. This is where failure is going to happen. If you continue to apply a force, necking will continue until fracture occurs. Um, and that's what's going to happen if you go past this point. Ductility. The amount of plasticity before fracture, the greater the ductility. The more material can be deformed. Um, and what we mean by that is some curves would be like this. Some curves will be here. Some curves are coming out here. The longer this curve is, the more ductile it is. So this would be an example of wire and um, uh, Cast iron, which isn't very ductile at all, is probably here a very short uh, curve. If you look at these, these are three examples that are really good at showing you which ones would be the most ductile. Uh, as you can tell, this one up here was necking. It was starting to neck, so it was very ductile. This part was starting to neck. Uh, maybe wasn't going to allow it to neck very much, so it had a little bit of ductility. And then the last one had no ductility at all. It just simply broke. One of the last things we want to talk about here is toughness. Uh, this is work per unit volume required to fracture a material. 
total area underneath the stress curve from the test. Uh, this initiation of fracture both strength and ductility. Well, as you can imagine, uh, this material has a certain amount of toughness. If we go back and look at the toughness underneath this curve, this whatever this object was didn't have nearly as much toughness as what this one up here. All right, its ability before it breaks, right? The ability to give before it breaks. And that's what this toughness tells us, the area underneath the curve. So we're going to talk real quickly about a couple different tests here. The first one is a compression test. Stress and strain relationships are similar to tension tests, elastic and plastic behavior. Test samples um, must have large cross-sectional area to resist bending and buckling. Material strengthens by stretching laterally and increasing its cross-sectional area. Uh, so if you want to have something that be able to can withstand more compression, you want to give it more cross-sectional area. Hardness test. Uh, resistance to permanent deformation. Resistance to scratching, wearing, cutting, or drilling inelastic rebound. Um, we have what's called the Brunel hardness test. It's a tungsten carbide ball is held with a 500-pound force for 15 seconds um, into the material. The resulting crater is measured and compared. Hardness testing, rock roll test. Small diamond tip cone is forced into the test sample by predetermined load. Depth of the penetration is measured and compared. Well, hey, that's it for the first part of our notes here. I'll catch you on the flip side.